Moving on to Critters 3, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. It sounds like I'm kidding, but I'm not. This also has Happy Gilmore's grandmother, aka Miss Pickman from The Amazing In the Mouth of Madness, and the little kid from Kindergarten Cop, Mr. Kimball, Mr. Kimball. I can never get that out of my head for some reason. Um, <laughs> I wasn't a huge fan of this. I remember liking this a lot more the you know the last time I had seen it. It had been a while, so when I went back to rewatch this, I was like, "Oh, this you know this should be fun." And I'd always been I'd always been quoted kind of saying like Leonardo DiCaprio is you know never been in a bad movie and I've always enjoyed everything he's ever been in and this and that. Now, I'm not going to say I just outright disliked or hated this movie. I did. There was some fun to be had here, but not a ton. I mean, this movie was, you know, fairly boring. A good half of it or more. Pretty much any time a critter isn't on screen, I was bored. And that's sad. And there's only like five critters in this entire movie. And they probably have five to ten minutes of screen time. I would probably say closer to the former. Like, maybe somewhere in the middle, like seven minutes. I thought it was interesting that the writer of this wrote uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, you know, Leatherface, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, and The Crow, and The Hills Run Red, and I got everything here? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow, he's got a pretty extensive career in horror. Um, now, this movie was shot back-to-back -back with part four, and it kind of has that Back to Future 2 ending, the 2B continued. I'm curious on what the first movie was to do that, like promised 2B continued ending, where it actually said it. I remember being in the theater with Back to the Future 2, and there was actually a trailer to part three at the end of part two. And I don't think I've seen that since. But I've seen a lot of movies that lead off. And some that have never come into fruition. Like uh, Automated or Transfusion, something like that. Uh, never got a sequel, even though it ends with a to be continued. And um, so far, all cheerleaders die uh, from Lucky McGee. That ended with a to be continued, and we've yet to see any progress on that. So, the to be continued thing is risky sometimes, although this was shot back to back, so they had it planned out. So, I think you really should only do the to be continued if you're currently filming the other film. Pumpkin had three, you know, four were shot back to back, stuff like that, although that doesn't say to be continued. Um, so there was no promise, but uh, yeah, I think that you shouldn't do a to be continued unless you're a thousand percent sure you're getting a second one or a third or a fourth or whatever you're promising. Um, the way that they connect these films together is just kind of a joke to me. Like the kids are out playing Frisbee. They throw it into like a ravine. They go down there. Charlie busts out of the ground. Like he literally like, bursts and flies out of the ground for what reason how he did that and what what the fuck and then he just so happens to give that family a crystal for god knows what reason like here if you need me like how many of those things does he have why pick this family and the fact that the critters actually picked that family and how did the eggs get under there like who put the eggs under there how did the eggs even get here in the first place why are they now outside of Grover's Bend? Where are these eggs coming from? How did, you know, I can't stop asking that question. Like, how did they get under the truck? Who put them there? Like, is that, I mean, I guess it could be explained in four, but I highly doubt it. It's just like, okay. And the fact that this all takes place in their apartment complex, like, they bring the egg, like, the eggs break under the truck, they run into that apartment complex, and then everyone in the apartment complex is just like, their first instinct isn't to just leave the apartment. I mean, they kind of trying to like be like, oh, well, they can't. It's like, bullshit, dude. How hard is it to get out of a fucking apartment complex? Like, or a building, I should say, not a complex. But how hard is it? Like, build a fucking rope out of sheets and rappel down. I mean, come on. Really? You can't get out of the house? This is silly. And that chick's foot caught when she's dangling. Get the fuck out of here. She couldn't have undone her foot from that. 
What's up with Charlie's Tarzan scream throughout this movie? Like, he has a couple different, like, Tarzan screams, and then at the end he does, like, this other scream. <laughs> Charlie's character is just is so shoehorned into this. They could have just had critters come to this apartment complex. They didn't even need to tie it together. But I, I guess they just wanted to transition into the fourth one, which the fourth one, this ends with the, with the fourth one being promised, and it also shows a little bit of foreshadowing to it by showing Ugg. And, you know, showing that they're going to be coming and getting and whatever. And obviously this one goes into space. And it just seems like this one's so unnecessary. It was like a vessel just to get Charlie to get back aboard. And it's like, you could have done that in the first minute of the fourth one and made it the third one. This one would be completely unnecessary. Um, but anyway. Um, now, I think the things... Like, let's get into the likes, I guess. I like that... Well, I guess I should say first that this film kind of just initially starts with like a couple bastard characters you want to die instantly. Um, and the first two didn't really do that all that much. They had like one, but this one has like a few and they're the only ones to die. You have the shitty landlord and then, you know, you've got the, the guy who owns the building. Uh, and they're both, I think they're the only two people that die. I mean, I think if, unless I missed somebody, but I don't think I did. So they just kind of set up these annoying characters to die and their deaths are not really all that interesting. You don't really have any cool, fun gore or kill scenes or anything. Um, but I did like that, you know, at least they killed them. I don't know. That's not the greatest plus, but this movie doesn't have a ton. I like when the girl bowls down the stairs and it kind of keeps cutting back and forth between the clips of the bowling and they like fly into the air for absolutely no reason. Um, I love that the critter, like two of the critters in this movie, like burn out like a tire before they, you know, propel forward. I found that to be funny. The gremlins thing is, is, you know, consistent here with the first two kind of following in the footsteps of gremlin-esque things. And this one yet again takes note from that and basically introduces a spike or a, uh, a stripe, sorry, not spike, a stripe character where he, you know, I don't know why all of a sudden they seem to be allergic to bleach and afraid of bunny slippers. I, that's not explained. But yeah, he screams at a bunny for some reason and then they touch bleach and they're fucking, his whole face singes and he gets the blonde hair. So it's basically like, and I liked that. I liked that it gave him his own identity so that you knew who they were like yeah there was another one called blackie they don't really play off of that all that much but at least they had a couple different names uh, you got bleach face and you got blackie and then there's like which is kind of racist <laughs> um and Blackie's like an opera singer in this. He like screams and you got the, you know, the uvula in the back and it's like gyrating. Besides the critters being the only real fun of this movie, really the only interesting part of this movie is, you know, the leading up to part four when Charlie's investigating the basement and you see Ugg and you feel like you're back in critters. Like this film doesn't feel like critters at all. It has some critters in it. It has a familiar face who's barely in it, but it just doesn't feel like a Critters movie at all. And so that last, like, you know, and it's a credit sequence. It's not even part of the film, really, as much as it's just like, like a Marvel movie where they do a after the credits teaser. That's basically what this was. This was like a pre-Marvel after credits footage. And that's the most interesting part of this movie for me. It was kind of like, oh, Ugg, and oh, he's going to go back to space, and... You know, now they're setting up something like they can't kill these last two eggs because that's the last two critters on Earth. Uh, or on, in the galaxy, I guess, you know, at anywhere. You know, we eradicate the species if he gets rid of those two. Um, now we're getting into the negatives. Uh, the flashback sequence at the very beginning when Charlie's giving, you know, the roundup of what happened is completely unnecessary. I mean, by the third movie... If you don't know what's going on from the first two movies, like what the fuck are you watching a third Critters for if you haven't seen one or two? And is the is the explanation all that, you know, necessary, really? I mean, they're fucking Critters. They came down and, and they're attacking shit. This isn't some complex thing. It's not like you're, 
you know, going back over the plot of the Matrix or something. This isn't some complex plot. This is Critters. You pretty much can guess what it is from the title, and seeing them is enough ex explanation alone. So I thought that was just like five minutes to, you know, eat up time. I mean, it's not as bad as like Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, which is like 45, 50% footage from the last movie, or The Boogeyman 2 and Boogeyman 3, which uses like 80%. 85% something insane like that of footage from the last one. It's fucking crazy. It's like, how do you call this a new movie? Wow. Um, it annoyed me that it, I said this earlier, but it just annoyed me that this was set in a city. Like the first one set in Grover's Bend, which is a small little community. And they attacked the whole town in the second one. And in sequels, they're supposed to go bigger and badder, right? And this one, they kind of just bring it back down to like one location, almost like the first one where they're attacking the house. And it's just like, really? Like now they're in the city? I mean, when you hear the premise of the film, like critters come to the big city, it's like, oh shit, like this is going to be them on the streets of New York or Detroit or wherever. I don't know. I, I can't even think of where this movie is actually set now that I think about it. Is it New York? Probably. But it's like when you hear that, you're like, oh, cool. They're going to be out in the city fucking shit up. There's going to be, it's going to be spread out. So much terrain for them to cover. So many interesting places this can go. And it's like, no, they're just going to stick them in an apartment complex. You know, it's kind of like, it reminds me of, you know, Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Now I am a fan of that movie. I know everyone hates it. Whatever, fuck it. But... <laughs> Jason isn't really very spread out. I mean, he does explore way more of New York than the Critters do here, but I feel like a lot more of that movie could have taken place in New York and it would have been a lot more fun. I mean, most of that takes place on a cruise ship. Uh, so it's just kind of like you're promising the city and you're not giving it to us. Um, the subtitles were very weird for the Critters this time. They only speak to, to, for them to need subtitles three times. Two of them were completely unnecessary. The two were um, P-U and Uh-Oh, and it's clear as day, P-U and Uh-Oh. And you're just like, I didn't need subtitles for that. <laughs> and then the other one's like, Blackie's in trouble. And that's it. That's like the only commentary from the critters in this movie. They literally could have just kept it to like one, but I almost was like, I almost thought they were like, well, we can't just have subtitles on one single line. It'll look weird. So maybe we have to give it to more. I don't know. That was a very odd thing where it was just like P-U, like something stinky in the room. And he goes, P-U. And it's like P-U below. It's like, we get it. We heard an uh-oh, same thing. That was silly. Um, I hate that there's only five critters in this movie. I mean, how many could fit under the truck? Whatever. The first movie, or the second movie, I'm sorry. They only leave behind like 20 eggs. And there's literally like a thousand critters in the movie. Now, of course, a lot of my complaints of this film are coming to the lack of budget. I get that. They didn't have a big budget. So, you know, they kept everything condensed, one location. And they didn't have enough money for critters and this and that. But hey, how about instead of making two movies and spreading spreading the budget out for two films, you take the budget for both and you make one good movie with more money. Oh no, you want us to fucking rent three and four to get us, you know, the double play on us. Like, that's bullshit. Um, and this movie just has a lot of like pointless family drama that isn't interesting. There isn't really a character that I could give a shit about. I mean, I know there's a lot of people who watch horror movies and they're like, I don't give a shit about character development. I, don't know, I just want to see people die. And it's like, <laughs> okay, that's fine. You have plenty of those movies. I find it funny when people talk about like Friday the 13th series. They're like, I don't want you to have Jason have any, you know, background. And I don't want them to you know, f have any characters that are interesting or anything. And it's like, I just want to see people get killed by Jason. And I want, you know, teenagers to be fucking in the woods and doing drugs and getting killed. And it's like, you have 
10 of those already. Like, you don't want to change it up at all? Not just a teeny? No? Okay. So, I don't know. Like, I do need characters to be semi-interesting for me to... Because you can't just have a movie where literally, like, every minute a person dies being slashed to death. I'm sure I would enjoy that movie if they made it, but if every single one of them was like that, it would get boring. I'm sorry, it would. Although there is a movie where a, where a person dies every single minute throughout the entire run time, and it's called Circle. It's currently on Netflix. It's a sci-fi movie. I really enjoy that, so I can highly recommend that um, as something unique. Uh, going through my notes... Oh, I really found it funny that this Mario that's moving out in the very beginning of the movie gets his truck completely smashed in by his neighbors because their brakes are out. And not only does the family not seem to be concerned that their truck just lost its brakes for no reason, but that Mario takes the de demo, you know, someone demolishing his truck so well. They're like, oh my God, Mario, I'm so sorry. He's like, he's kind of like, meh. Eh, just crushed by truck. I'm being evicted from my house. I probably have no money because I live in a shitty neighborhood. And you just wrecked the one thing I do have. Like, nah, no big deal. Man, Mario, you are an amazing person. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's it. I always end up forgetting, like, one thing on my notes. And I, like, I turn it off and I post it. And I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> I missed that. I wanted to talk about that. But I never know what to do. So, I think that's it. Yeah, it looks like everything I've written down. So, uh, I actually have Critters 4 queued up right now on my TV. So, I'm going to go check that out. And hopefully it's better than this. Because this was a serious downgrade from Part 2. Come on, Leo. I expect better from you.